years ago, I dove into PubMed looking for anything that could help MS recovery. That's when I first started reading about iodine and the connection it has to remyelination. I didn't just skim the articles. I spent hours deep diving into studies, following citations, and comparing findings. The more I read, the more I was in wonder. Was something as simple as iodine playing a role in brain repair? I started with Lugo's iodine. <laughs> Back then, I didn't really know where the line was. I pushed up to eight drops a day, thinking more was better. <laughs> but then my body gave me a warning. I started to develop a sore throat. An ultrasound showed my thyroid was enlarged. That was a wake-up call. With my sister having Hashimoto's, I knew I was walking on thin ice. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the thyroid gland, often causing it to become inflamed, enlarged, and eventually underactive. It means her thyroid function is fragile, and that family connection made me extra cautious about how far I wanted to push with iodine. So, that's when I made a switch to nascent iodine. Unlike Lugol's, it was designed for human consumption. Cleaner, gentler. I kept myself at three drops every morning and I've stayed there ever since. That's years of steady, constant use. And here's the strange part. With all the recovery I've been feeling, I can't shake the thought that it's doing more than just supplying my thyroid. That suspicion has scientific weight behind it. Iodine is the raw material for thyroid hormones T3 and T4. Most people stop there. They think thyroid equals metabolism. But thyroid hormones also act directly on the central nervous system. Specifically, they interact with oligodendrocyte precursor cells, or OPCs. These are the very cells responsible for generating new myelin. In animal models, triodothyronine, T3, has been shown to push OPCs to mature into myelinating oligodendrocytes. Without enough iodine, thyroid hormone production weakens, that signal fades, and the repair process stalls. It's not speculation. It's been demonstrated across multiple experiments. That was a big surprise to me. I had always thought of iodine as this boring mineral that you take for your thyroid. But if it's acting on the actual repair cells in the brain, that's not boring at all. That's a hidden pathway. There's another layer. Thyroid hormones don't just affect cell fate. They also influence energy production. They boost mitochondrial biogenesis and increase ATP output. Demyelinated axons and repairing oligodendrocytes need enormous amounts of energy to function. By supporting thyroid hormone production, iodine indirectly fuels the energy budget for repair. That connects with what I feel in my body, whether it's rowing intervals, heavy lifting, or even my improved sleep scores. There's this steady base of energy. It feels like the system is humming on better than it used to. And now I can see why. If thyroid hormones are firing right, the mitochondria in my brain and muscles are firing right too. And iodine isn't limited to the thyroid gland. It's also stored in immune tissues. 
Research suggests iodine has antioxidant properties and can modulate cytokines, the signaling molecules that drive inflammation. In MS, the inflammatory environment is one of the biggest obstacles to remyelination. If iodine helps calm that storm, it doesn't just support the thyroid, it helps open a window for repair in the brain. Looking back at my recovery pillars, it makes perfect sense. Niacin and niacinamide to activate microglia and clear out myelin debris. Potassium to stabilize electrical signaling and improve sleep quality. Exercise to drive neuroplasticity and rebuild strength. And iodine, quietly priming thyroid signaling, mitochondria, in the immune system. So remyelination has a chance. All of these things interlock. It's not one thing or the other. It's not a one single miracle. It's the synergy of them all. You're absolutely right. No single factor is enough, but remove one and the whole system weakens. Iodine doesn't get headlines the way vitamin D or B12 does in MS, but without it, thyroid signaling falters, OPCs stall, and energy lags. With it, those pathways stay active. It's the difference between a system stuck in idle and one ready to repair. That reframes how I think about recovery. I never thought a trace mineral I'd been quietly taking every morning would be doing so much under the surface. But now, I finally understand why it's worth keeping in my routine. Even with the risk of going too high, especially with my family history, I know I have to respect the limits. But staying consistent at three drops feels right, and I've had no problems since. And the developmental evidence supports your instincts. In infants, iodine deficiency leads to hypomyelination and long-term neurological deficits. That's not controversial, it's well established. The same biology that governs brain development early in life doesn't just vanish in adulthood. It continues to influence repair processes, especially under the stress of diseases like multiple sclerosis. That ties it all together for me. When I share about iodine, I want people to understand it's not about mega dosing or chasing miracles. It's about giving the body what it needs so the larger repair process can happen. For me, it's been one quiet but essential pillar of recovery. And for your viewers, the takeaway is powerful. Iodine may not be glamorous, but it's fundamental. It primes thyroid signaling, fuels mitochondria, and creates a calmer immune environment. In short, it doesn't just keep the metabolism running, it sets the stage for brain repair. I never imagined that a trace mineral couldn't have this much impact. But looking back over the years of recovery, it's been there, quietly in the background all along, quietly doing its part. If you found this breakdown helpful, share your own experiences with iodine, thyroid health, or recovery in the comments. Share it with others as well. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a future video. And if you want my full supplement stack laid out in detail, I've uploaded a PDF on a Patreon. The link is in the description. Until the next one.